Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to another webinar organized by APRF. I'm Eddie, and I'm your host today. You know what? Every now and then, there is a revolutionary business model or manufacturing technology coming to the market. If you attend our webinars or visit our APRF before, you must have experienced many of them. Uh, for example, sustainable manufacturing process, waste management, and automation system. Our speaker today, Andrew, is a true advocate in these areas. And because of this, we invite him to be one of the members of the APR of Sustainability Steering Committee. He is the general manager of ICO and also the co-founder and CEO of ELSE. We in APF call him a futurist because uh, he is full of idea on how the leather and footwear industry should, should involve, evolve. And his companies are where he and his team visualize all these ideas. So today's webinar's topic is uh, making it cool again. What do you think? Do you think there are uh, there is a high tech future for the leather industry? I think we have, but. Uh, we will also want to hear your opinion. So uh, let us know uh, your thought using the chat functions. And if you have any questions uh, for our speakers, please type in in the Q&A box. And uh, we are going to answer you after Andrew presentations. So before we invite uh, Andrew, I would like to show you a one minute video so uh, to kickstart our weapons. So here we go. So I see uh, Andrew is here. So Andrew, how are you? Yeah, here yeah. I am. Yeah. May I start? So I think, uh, this is the episode two of your webinar. Uh, you share what you are uh, in our webinar several months ago. So uh, which is very well attended and uh, we received a lot of uh, feedback. So are you, ready? are you ready to share something new to us today? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's and see. To you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome uh, from Italy today uh, all the friends of leather, let me call us, this, this, this community, this group like that. Maybe you are coming from leather industry or leather goods or uh, such as myself from footwear uh, or accessories or uh, automotive. We all are interested about the future of leather. We love leather, right? Okay, so I'm Andre Golub. And uh, yeah, as uh, an introduction was said, uh, uh, that the uh, IPLF community already knows myself by some previous uh, seminars and also the executive summit. Today, um, we'll dedicate uh, some 45 minutes together to, uh, to analyze and, and see uh, what it could be the new future, the better future for the leather industry, as we all know, 
apart from the crisis in general, no, our industry <clears throat> is living quite a hard time. So it has to reinvent itself. Okay, so I have some some ideas and maybe you other other companies are already doing similar things or even better things that would be great to bring it on the on the on the table and discuss let me share my screen so i can show you a better view okay here we are making it cool again right <laughs> let's see what it means okay very uh, quickly i call group now you already seen the video thank you very much for the introduction no we are uh, just a quickly just so, so you can understand where the expertise come from we're an international group of companies we count five r and d offices so mostly we are r and d technology developer company and uh, we have two commercial offices in, in 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 europe as well in italy and spain okay uh, and we like to present ourselves like experts in high-tech industrial uh, automation so it's high-tech it's always not not the traditional model but we use such technologies and approaches like artificial intelligence the robotics uh, and uh, mm, digital twins and so on now this makes me believe that uh, we have some i have something to share and from my company but not only the let's say the best and the best cases the most interesting situations from uh, from our industry and all around it I see something blinking here. Let me just be sure that everything goes smoothly. Okay. Uh, so the new agenda for any business. One, two, three, and three points. Let, let's see. So first of all, a positive wave. Okay, I see here something blinking. The positive ways. We all know uh, the UN goals for sustainable development. Let's say, let's say in a good times, not yet before the crisis, uh, we already decided to go sustainable business, right? For all in any industries, because you know uh, we are at the, at the point on no return, or we change it, or that's going to be a bad future for for everybody. I mean, in terms of planet, right? So the, the famous 17 sustainable goals defined by uh, United Nations and four, at least four of them are highly related to, to our, our industries, our set of industries. So we talk about uh, good uh, health and well-being. Again, something's blinking here. What, what's going on? Okay, no, nothing. Uh, then we talk about industry innovation infrastructures. We talk about sustainable cities and communities and responsible, especially responsible consumption and production, right? So that was the plan already. But then what we've seen is the crisis, now the virus and the, its related pandemic situation. And this basically, again, still something's blinking here all the time. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so the pandemic uh, probably has changed forever our industry. It's not anymore just a wish, just an idea by uh, United Nations and great companies which were already oriented to sustainable sustainable future but now this this situation is changing all of us not even like consumers so that's that's the basically the basic point where everything starts from then the companies b2b community supply chains uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, you know all that, that all that that's around and 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 we we see that brands are already doing now first of all they are accepting digital strategy finally accepting it and well let I can hopefully say accelerating. We see the decreasing numbers of samples, of physical samples, so less waste everywhere, it's been declared. Uh, implemented virtual showrooms. So even in B2B le level, like in B2C, where we all know that digitalization already brought us to buying online and almost anything, not even from materials such complicated materials such as leather. But virtual showrooms means the change, mindset change, uh, the change of mind uh, on the B2B level. So the companies start exchanging their their proposals, ideas, products, uh, um, components, materials already on, online, right? And then especially very important, this is really important, also related to B2C phenomena, but uh, it is strategic. Uh, brands are reducing the size of collections. So we want to produce less, but make it better, distribute it better, Again, uh, thinking of um, having sustainability in, in our minds. And here, the third, the third step, no, it was the digital technology. 
uh, as I say, you know, I'm, I'm myself and my company more experts in the footwear sector. So what is going on in our sector? And uh, it is so the, the, the revolution, technical revolution already happened, we may say, and uh, the leather industry will follow that that's out of doubt. So let me just quickly show, you know, demonstrate which are the five uh, big pillars of <coughs> digital transformation roadmap in the footwear. So we talk about digital design prototyping, again, less waste, uh, uh, more digital, uh, quicker uh, time to market, um, you know, so adaptation of new tools like 3D design and digital sampling and so on. Then we talk about retail, the retail, the consumers becomes clo become closer. Consumer are just one click, you know, ahead of uh, or far from, from the company. So we talk about uh, 3D visualization online, uh, product customization, such new models like made to order, made to measure, which are yet complicated, but they will completely change uh, the way how we are used to do business. Or then we talk about smart manufacturing and automation because without this, a kind of back end that supports this transformation without an agile, uh, manufacturing, but in a new way, not just agile, the process is really quick, really efficient. We can't do nothing. No, we can only dream to change the industry, but if the backend is not able to supply, support us, uh, there is no way to go to go further. Then we talk about very important, so here, here we are, no, the sustainability and how the techno specific technology like AI and big data helps us replanning rethinking how to plan, how to design, how to produce, how to distribute, how to interact between us and everything. So we have data, we may analyze it, we can make better decisions, uh, we can optimize everything. And finally, digital supply. Again, already mentioned here concretely, if we don't organize the supply chain in the way that we interact with each other on B2B level in the same efficient way like we already interact with our consumers, there is no way to, to go uh, further in, in, in an efficient way, right? So these are three points, started from positive, then the crisis, and then the tools. We're ready? Maybe yes. Okay, back to the, to the earth, leather. Uh, the future of leather, well, I can bet it will be digital business. Maybe some of you don't agree, some others uh, see, I uh, have a different opinion. Some others fully agree, but with different arguments. Let's see what I, what I have to share. Okay, so we talk about uh, launching in parallel a new new value chain for leather. No, we're in the traditional approach. We're used to have leather as a physical piece. And so brands, manufacturers, consumers, and tanneries, all the ecosystem around it is concentrated and basically exchanging using this physical piece and all the potential is related to it, to that piece of leather. Now, in the new approach, so in the information era, we talk about the leather as data holder. So the physical piece, it exists, it, it is surely very important because at the end it is used to do things, but we can use its uh, how to say, virtual brother. Not yet, I don't enter, but well, okay, let me anticipate. We call it digital twin. So the value of this physical piece of leather or it to, to its potential, which on the physical piece, it can hardly be recognized, can be concentrated and exchanged uh, through a data holder, not through basically the, the, the digital twin of this leather. In this case, we don't lose the original value chain, of course. Now it's very important. And so all related processes to treating the physical piece is very, uh, very important. But at the same time, we can introduce a new value chain and a new set of processes, very interesting, which would open a few uh, highly promising scenarios. Uh, well, the vision, this is, related to our company, but I believe many, uh, many, if not most of other companies would agree that zero waste is our main objective with the leather, right? So the, critic, the critics of leather is that it is not, the processes are not so efficient. And apart from, well, let me say the games of marketing, which is out of scope of our today um, discussion, uh, from the practical point of view, right? Uh, the waste is, is a big problem and te technology can really help us optimizing it. No, so think of if we digitalize leather, make, uh, make it available for analysis and also predictions, uh, planning, intelligent planning on the digital le le level. No, what, uh, what interesting scenarios can, uh, can, be, can be observed, no? So first of all, using the right amount of leather. This is totally game, a total uh, game changer. 
if every time we need to to cut to create something no we need to use the piece of leather we would know which one to use and would be able to use that one from the objective of minimizing the waste and maximizing the efficiency and the quality of the product that would totally change everything right today we use just fifo first in first out so or well <laughs> whatever it is that maybe not not uh, not technical uh, approach that is applied to the warehouse management but for me it's something in something out we take that piece it is ready to be used that's it instead if we elaborate in parallel digital version of leather and can evaluate what is used for what is useful for what is where it's more efficient and then take exactly that piece of leather and use it that is as i said from my point of view that is the main the main revolution we would have improved logistics because we can move we have uh, move the flows of data in parallel to flows of physical of physical pieces so with the data we do all the new value chain that we'll, we'll see now piece by piece, basically exchange it, moving it to uh, along the value chain and the physical piece is following. So then intelligent nesting, again, this is a technical part now to implement the zero waste initiative. Uh, intelligent nesting, it for me, for how our company sees it, uh, again, uh, the, limit, the limitation of nesting is that you, we want to optimize the use of surface of a given piece. Instead, if we have these pieces, all in memory and can find the right one we can make the intelligent nesting really really a lot of percents more uh, with a higher efficiency right so nesting could have a totally different life and uh, especially if it's automated then we gather the statistics uh, we can make it even much more efficient and then small start um, smart use of leather again also related to technology to analysis to artificial intelligence and and uh, uh, the computer vision and so on we can recommend the better parts so the quality zones you know the the color gradient we can uh, manage the things automatically and to optimize processes of the use so of the production and by 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 conclusion the quality of products and the efficiency in everything and then well, the final point, data generation. Now we'll have a lot of data. You know, uh, leather is a very old uh, industry. You now there are so many pieces passing basically every second you now and uh, through some, uh, some, some factory, some tannery, but it's not remaining any track of it. Instead, if we bring it to digital level, we will start finally gathering statistics. And it's very important knowing how the pieces of leather are made, which are the types, which are the problems, uh, you know, and then how they are used. It's incredible. No? So, so as soon as we, start, as, as we can, uh, we we'll start the, the, these, uh, these uh, change the approach. And, uh, we will, the industry will grow and become richer and richer uh, thanks to the data and knowledge gathered. Then it also can enable very interesting new, new scenarios that maybe today uh, looks, as I already anticipated, far a bit far complicated, but you know, with the sustainability compass, uh, uh, they can be closer than, than we think. So for manufacturers, again, the zero waste strategy vector that is finally possible to follow. So it's not only words, it's not only marketing, but with the technology, we probably can, can achieve it. And, uh, um, means that it will be a, a strategy by itself and then second part is traceability and transparency we'll see later details traceability and transparency we want to show to the world that the the true situation right and so be, better than to show in the maximum transparency and thanks to technology that can support it and so to make it this information available instead of just try to talk you know uh, it's very important then we have consumers and consumers today with this all, all this no sustainability in their minds and green uh, green approach green, green lifestyle uh, they they are basically ready or very soon are getting ready to sustainable and responsible consumption right that means uh, buying less uh, selecting better the products caring about the products or even reusing them so secondhand market even on luxury level is becoming uh, important interesting so probably a piece of uh, a product a fashion product would live uh, a, a much longer time that is the goal instead of the goal as we know no fast fashion is to live the quicker life but the cost as less as possible here the things are changing and think of the scenarios such as made to measure 
well, at least made to order starting and then made to measure, right? This, it, it is impossible to implement these scenarios on at scale, right? If we don't use the technology that allows digitalization and all elaboration on a digital level of, of the potential of, of the ladder. And finally, the brands that they are very happy, right, to adopt sustainable design. But again, what it means, how to implement it, you, we miss today a base to, 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 to make it possible apart from nice marketing and, and, and storytelling. And also made to order all small batches. That's, as, as already said, one of the strategies that brands are ready to adapt. So making small, making things better, selling it to the right people, uh, educate people to treat better their products and so on and so on. And here leather is the ideal material to, to be part of this new value chain. So I call digital and we believe that, uh, that, that, that our mission, we can define our mission in this direction is to improve the boss processes. Is the leather as material and how we use the leather, right? When further, very quickly, a leather 4.0, like in general, industry 4.0 frameworks would count the technologies such as AI, artificial intelligence. I will talk in more details some later. Then IoT, Internet of Things. It uh, it means the things that it would allow tracking physical happening, physical advance at factory or at the at the at the, at the, at the, mm, at the warehouse during logistic processes. And so uh, gather the data, transfer the data to somewhere where it will be analyzed, so data analytics. And then finally, we even talk about addi additive manufacturing, but here I wouldn't go and deeper to the to addi additive manufacturing because our next arguments are more, more concrete and especially where my company and myself have an expertise and we can, we can prove, we can bet it is already ready. This technology is already ready and can, can help the industry. So first of all, is artificial intelligence, right? So reliability and efficiency of def defecting and classifying leather surfaces. That is the base. If we don't scan, don't analyze the leathers, you know, all the rest is like tracing it, optimizing the use of it, how? every piece of leather has to be uh, analyzed. That, that's one point. And second, with this, we surely pass to intelligent and digital factories or, well, manufacturing or intelligent supply chain because as I said in the introduction part, we, can, we basically treat and operate the digital replica of, of, of the leather, not its physical. And physical, it, physical piece, it comes where it is already being decided how to use it. So you have a program, you know how to use it, but you elaborate everything on digital level. So it's, of course, it's a combination of, of other technologies which will follow basically the digital twin and the digital uh, replica of the products. We'll see later how. Okay, so as we say, one of the main, the most important challenge for us is to prove, implement traceability, right? Otherwise, we talk, everybody declares to be sustainable, we, you know, we can be certified and anything, but the consumers, the markets, the partners are, can hardly verify it. So, well, let me say, don't believe so much, right? Not not everybody, but maybe uh, it would be much easy to uh, to deal with with the market if we could simply show it, right? Traceability. Coming back to fashion uh, sector, where things, especially technology, is already more advanced. Uh, so uh, basically, maybe this the brand that you see here. I, I'm sure no many 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 of you already recognized. I, it was it is basically from my point of view an icon. They were the first uh, to adopt the use of blockchain, yet uh, yet maybe as a proof of concept. But the idea was simple: you not know, to show and to allow consumers tracking for, via scanning of QR code or scanning an intelligent market. Uh, uh, marker uh, on, on the IoT uh, uh, level to verify the information about the product starting from who's made the materials, where the materials come from, then how they were treated and uh, the, at, at the end who produced, who distributed the product and so on and so on. And you know that greatly worked, consumers were appre appreciating a lot and this was basically start of the revolution uh, and in, 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 the, in, in, in the vision of how blockchain could, could be helpful. Again, here I don't want to enter in, into details how the technology works. Now, many of you, if not all, surely, I think everybody heard the term blockchain. It is just a reliable system to track information. Now, we just, we can trust it. It doesn't matter how it is implemented. It is a kind of database. 
that is made by technicians that we can trust. And then at the end, the most important thing is that the information once written on a blockchain network, it cannot be changed, at least not very, not easily, right? It may be by some hyper hackers, but I don't think so up to now. We say it's 100% reliable. It also means anything we put there, we can say you, tr you can trust it, you know? So if the information is there, it is true. Uh, brands go even 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 beyond so uh, it's not only tracking of a physical piece and its supply chain but for example Ralph Lauren they declare a, a digital product identity you know so through this digitalization and a full transparency you know for full uh, structuring on a digital level of the components of the supply chain and so on we come to to the idea is that every product is every product in its life cycle becomes uh, uh, in the, uh, a, a, a digital. Uh, well, basically, they, they declare it's burn digital. Now, first, it's burn digital, and we, we track it, and then physical product. It's only following. No, but we deal. So the consumers are already dealing. The consumers from one side and B two B. So the supply chain uh, partners uh, from another side are dealing with digital product, and then physical product. It, it, it comes. Well, why I'm telling this a bit with this specific focus and maybe simplifying it a bit uh, is that uh, because uh, leather is much more interesting, it's a special material, maybe unique material uh, from the sense of traceability because it, it is every piece of leather is different right it's not uh, just uh, the, the lines of it's not, it's not how the textile is structured from from yarns and, and so on every leather it's like that it is uh, it has its own nature we can once frozen it then we can follow it during the lifestyle the life cycle uh, it is very interesting now so there are some also for leather giving you some examples like the famous ctc quality experts uh you know all, all of us know them very well they're implementing some systematic um, traceability in the leather now in step four i recommend you to go to their website and check this initiative it's quite complicated very interesting it's four steps starting from yet the meat right the meat trace traceability then we go to farms and then uh, the intelligent marking and reading uh, this marking of different uh, different types of marking from laser marking, paper labeling, and also even having the, the passport or the intelligent product passport. So the, here there is one uh, concrete uh, example of implementation of, of this value chain for traceability. And also textile exchange is another project I found. Uh, also very interesting, they, they start from farming, right? They introduce some DCF protocol and, and then they have in mind that given some in, in initiatives uh, to, uh, to both to, to the to brands and, and to, to farmers. Uh, so uh, you see here, now it's like a tra uh, the traceability from uh, from basically from start to to the product through the production and to uh, to distribution. So farming and leather production process in the supply chain uh, now can be organized and in a way to prove uh, the traceability is possible. And blockchain is one of the tools. Okay. This is very interesting example I wanted to present before going uh, to my, 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 my best and preferred uh, arguments of digitalization is, um, you know, counterfeiting. Uh, well, it's a big problem no? and, and, and need to prove the authenticity, especially for premium and luxury products is, is something very important. So there are companies like uh, Entropy, which uh, have that, as, as I said in the beginning, having the statistics, having the knowledge about how letters are made, it is possible to verify uh, through their templates. Uh, so with the, with, the, with the help of, of a computer vision technology and artificial intelligence to verify if the piece of leather is a, basically a product made from a, from a leather is authentic or it's possibly a fake. No entropy. You may also find some nice videos on the, on a video hosting uh, system, so that they they prove to have ninety eight percent of uh, reliability of of the detection system. Okay, uh, then. Okay, final point. Finally, back back to us. Uh, well, if we can digitalize the letters, and and we need we have on the other side uh, the consumers ready, the brands possibly ready to trade and to exchange digital information. The question is, how do we do it physically? You know, how do we, where do we treat 
nobody nobody ever had a systems to treat a digital uh, leather pieces, right? There are some very interesting projects like over the mention textile exchange, the material exchange, an incredible uh, well organized pro project, and also you know the or the Baidu network uh, uh, that to trade leathers, but we. And, L, and, 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 and uh, I call, uh, we also preparing to launch a B2B ecosystem network uh, where, with a specific model for our B2B ecosystem network for uh, trading uh, leather in, 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 in via its digital uh, replicas. Uh, so that the idea is to um, bring a kind of uh, marketplace, specific marketplace, but not only for samples, for each specific scanned piece of leather that the companies can exchange it, see the, 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 the characteristics and maybe orders only those which, are, which have specific characteristics uh, somehow to make it online. Yet we won't go deeper to that. Let's wait <laughs> for the next occasion now once we're ready to present uh, this, in, this innovation. Now, fundamental, uh, what, what it lays behind it, digital twins, very, very quickly. I know my time is almost up. Mm. up. So digital twin is a term, is a term, is the idea that it didn't, was, was not burned to, uh, to name a process in, inside the leather industry, for sure. And even the footwear, it's, let me say, it's not, not, bur not burned there, but already well adapted. It's an idea about creating a virtual replica of, a, of, a, of, a, of an entire physical product. You now, so think that the product exists physically, it's been made in the factory, but even before it's, it's made, you already can have its expected way how it physically would look like on a digital uh, level. Now, and this digital twin may live the parallel life along the value chain like we've seen, seen before in parallel with the physical product, right? So that is for sure still, one may say, I still can imagine, but for leather, Okay, this is how we see it. Well, uh, some processes, most of processes have been already implemented. Some others are still in development. So we scan and analyze, intelligently uh, analyze uh, each bit of leather for automatic quality categorization to allow its advanced search. So how, because we know the structure. Now we know the color zones. We would know the, uh, the quality zones. We know the defects to avoid. We can make like, um, I said in the beginning, intelligent nesting simulation. So I can even verify and find different uh, ideal product parts to be used for this specific type of leather, right? This basically, we want to enable a net surface trading, as, as I mentioned before, now on, a, on a marketplace which is coming in the, in the next month. Uh, we will exchange the information about net surface. It's not anymore uh, just a, you know theoretical surface, but it's net surface because you know this, the structure and the nature of it. And it will allow even single piece trading. Who would know it? Who would need it? You say maybe a lot of companies, especially if you don't buy a single piece, you buy hundred thousand of pieces, but you would know the characteristics of everyone. Now, and a digital passport is something that has all this information inside. Okay. Finally, digitalization and inspection. We all know uh, now how the samples are digitalized already now. So our friends, uh, Bontex in Italy, they are very active. There are other companies. Uh, but this, well, this is how it's used. No? We produ they produce videos and they, 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 they scan leather steel. These are samples. They're useful to trade, again, with the, with the blind approach, so with the closed eyes. This is how a, a medium, no standard product would look like, but then every piece is different. Instead, let me skip this. Uh, if we talk about digitalizing every piece, we would need the different technologies. No, Icol has made uh, it's a, a specific new machine for leather digitalization, which can be our machine, which can be other machine, and that some partners are ready to produce, and we uh, license the technology. Or it could be even third-party machines, which just scan, make highest quality possible uh, for a photo of the of the of the leather surface, and then we analyze it with our uh, with our services. Now, and at the end, what happens? You do the analysis. We, uh, the artificial intelligence um, 
train it on uh, on the best models uh, to uh, to uh, identify defects uh, and, and zones then becomes uh, so powerful that on in some ideal uh, some some good some some <laughs> best conditions let me say it can detect up to 98 percent of accuracy this is our goal it's not always achieved uh, yet uh, with some specific types of ladder there are some some work still to do but we bet to have in few months uh, uh, in a system which which can really recognize all, um, almost uh, every type of defect or type of imperfection uh, anomaly classify it and so to prepare a map for for the ladder automatically without any need uh, for human intervention then from there, of course, we have we can may have intelligent zoning, quality zoning, right? Semantic separation of zones uh, and, and uh, uh, orient uh, different zone for different type of products to be to be placed, to be cut, to be used for that. And after all, okay, saying all these, so digital twins, uh, intelligence scanning analysis, uh, virtual trading, and so on and so on. What what could be the future after, not let's say to not think only of the next two, three years, what is after. Uh, well, we, we already elaborated and well, there are other companies on the market that also work on the scenarios uh, such as making leather piece a new high tech material. Think of the elasticity management, elasticity management, if you can. Well, by depositing some specific material, like in our case, it's specific um, polymer uh, that, that robots can deposit in, in, in the known zones, huh? it will change the, um, the piece of leather, uh, uh, the, the properties of the piece of leather in different uh, zones, no, uh, a different, somewhere it's more, uh, it's more flexible, somewhere it's, 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 uh, it's hard, no, so you, you basically, uh, embed into into the leather this property yet before cutting you no know, you can you still do it on on the full, on the full piece then think of printed electronics how many companies work on new materials instead here we have the whole world uh, that's ready to uh, that that is producing that's already used to to work with leather and we can Trans, uh, transform it into high tech and new material by just integrating into it the printed electronics, so like sensors, like heating uh, lines, like specific, uh, well, the, the, whatever it will be invented, you know, it can be deposited and, and on the leather on the internal part or maybe an even external part, depending on, on the features. And the same, uh, all the traditional material becomes a real high-tech high, high, high uh, powerhouse of features. And also the IoT, not the sensors for traceability. Uh, we can embed them at the earliest stage and then trace them along the whole, the whole chain. And more to come, and for this more, I can only mm, give you some <laughs> To, to, to you know, the, the, uh, an idea to dream is that probably we will uh, learn to treat to fix some defects. And here, a totally new set of scenarios now can be opened. I think if we can fix some critical defects, not everything, really not the whole, you cannot <laughs> close the whole, but some of the defects, if they can, like in cosmetic operation, like we do it on the face no, or on the body, if we can we can uh, fix it on uh, on the leather during the digitalization process or in the pre-production pre, pre process, you know, this will change it again, the whole industry and open totally new scenarios. Finally, that that is my uh, idea on the table. Uh, no, I, I I can I can bet that many of you that that heard that that that, that he, hear the, you know my uh, my arguments and maybe uh, heard over the other arguments about for the future of leather uh, thanks to high tech technology will think that it's a bit complicated. It's maybe a bit expensive. You know, we would need to have the skills uh, and so on and so on. There are so many reasons now why a traditional industry would say, well, that's great, but maybe only top brands companies can adopt this approach. We are not so rich and so on. No? The idea is that probably such high-tech technology should not be sold and installed and both acquired by every company. It can be concentrated in small, small, well, a smaller or medium or bigger regional centers. Now, I was working on this idea and not, cannot yet disclose where they will pop up and how soon, very soon, and in hopefully in many, many places. But the idea is that you have a regional factory 
which makes a, a partnership with the tenderies, not with the partner, so we, they, to get to acquire from them the leather, then it's scanned on with all these analogies, no, all robotics, all digital twins, and, and all this you know, complicated stuff. It happens uh, just inside, but tenderie basically doesn't care. They receive a DM digital passport and can trade the digital replica of, of, of the leather. And this, this service center can be you know, or only for digitalization or to full uh, cycle up to cutting pieces and delivering the cut pieces to footwear companies, which many of them are, are also happy to not have the headache of, of, of the leather, uh, 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 how to say, preparation and, up, uh, and, and cutting operations, which are very complex and also very expensive, you know, with the machines that especially require even people to, to, to care of them. So this is my, how to say, the best um, provocation on the table. Would the industry accept the model of concentrating, servitization of concentrating high technology, not in every uh, factory, but in, in some uh, service centers? And then all this stack of technologies that will probably bring us to, to real high tech. Uh, what, what do you think of it? I think I finished. Uh, you can contact and verify anything, any, any my, many other facts about uh, the technology uh, from iCall on the site, uh, on the website, groupicall.com. You, you may find me on WeChat, on LinkedIn, and contact me via email or via APLF. I thank you for, for the attention, and now probably it's time to, to discuss, to hear your opinions. Thank you, Andre. So uh, it's certainly a very innovative and uh, but, uh, very uh, ambitious project. So uh, we have actually received some questions from the audience and uh, actually uh, they are asking if this technology for leather digitalization and um, using AI to detect the defective material is already tested in the industry or is it only a lab project? Well, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's good. That, that, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Uh, when in the lab, we have uh, the technology for, let's say, for decades, for the next uh, couple of years. But the basic part of it is already working. It's implemented in some, uh, in some brands and, 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 and producers. Uh, as I said in the, in the introduction part, no, iCall Group is a group of companies, and we have straight relationship with, uh, with uh, some uh, um, at, at our site, you know, at the territory of ex uh, Soviet Union, we have a strategic relationship and, and partnership with a uh, brand and, and producer called Belvesta, Belvest Company. You may find uh, then maybe we can we can share later. Now also on the slide it's written. Uh, uh, we uh, the, we test most of our technology in this uh, very concrete environment. So it, it is a brand who is producing, commercializing uh, almost two millions on, of, of, of pair of shoes and their uh, cutting uh, already becomes an, like a kind of service, independent service uh, for digitalization of leather. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have, we have a first uh, very important proof and, uh, and uh, hands-on project uh, uh, where uh, all this uh, new technology is, is cooking and, and testing. And uh, after that, it is ready for, uh, for um, market rolling out worldwide i think uh, over the uh, the beginning of the next year so here's another question how do you plan to work with the markets like uh, in china or asia which are very uh, you know challenging to penetrate for european countries so do you have any local partners or maybe uh, to produce the robotized leather warehouse solution just for china <laughs> That's again a very good question. Thank you so much. Sure, uh, we understand that from Europe, for example, going to China and establishing a brand, a reliable uh, company so quickly as the industry needs, it's it's almost impossible. Not especially for a high tech company like us. So we we will move uh, uh, through the partners. We already have some uh, some uh, some companies that are, that are interested in localizing our solutions and even localizing some part of our uh, some part of IP, so the, the knowledge, the know-how, uh, and we will be very happy to produce 
the hardware right in China for Chinese market and to uh, to license to uh, other companies which have cutting technology well then then we will see if, if it's not strictly in competition with us but we we don't want to build, how to say to to seek uh, to see the market like a competitors not competitors we believe that the technology especially such a new one can benefit to everybody so most probably it will be available to uh, to any uh, desired partners uh, so yes it, it it will be regional through uh, development through regional partners that for sure mm. so i received a question uh, from a leather consultant's name Bala, Mr. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bala, for your questions. So you just mentioned in your presentation about passport. What do you mean passport? Is, does it mean a letter inspection report? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, passport, it may be just a nice name to call mm. uh, some technical format uh, of data. Now, because digital twin maybe, and uh, not, not every, everybody understands. Now, digital twin is really a digital replica of physical properties or visual properties of a product and everything like that. Uh, it is a, a strong technical format now, but we, we, we think to have something more on, on, on the level of market, mar, mar, marketing. So you buy a product, you use digital passport to verify what is inside but not being technic te technical uh, technical expert you know so the passport is a thing on top of, of digital twin uh, it's basically a concept for uh, to simplify the the use of the information yeah so uh, another question is uh, can your system uh, inspect uh, other than defects can it also inspect colors green another leather surface absolutely exactly yes so it's intelligent analysis defect for us it's only part of 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 of, of the of, of the game let's say you know so we uh, the goal is to digitalize to intelligently analyze the leather see its structure uh, so quality zones and uh, uh, and gra uh, color gradient uh, must have to optimize the nesting. So if those who are from industry who needs the need, who knows the needs of the nesting would understand. Now anything that would make nesting much more efficient. Now so we we work on the, uh, of a gathering big data level statistics to know how every specific type of leather from specific producer uh, from specific animal from you know uh, cross out uh, the arguments how they should be structured and then we have uh, since we work on the level of AI you now we have neural networks which analyze this information that can even predict the level of uh, color distribution, uh, predict the new defects. Uh, so it's it's uh, 360 degrees. Anything that is on the surface, yes. Yeah. And defect is only 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 part. It's very important, but technically speaking, it's just one one of the part, yeah. one one of the goals. So we have another questions from Raf. Hello, Raf. Uh, so do you also do automation in tanneries? Uh, well, uh, to easily uh, re uh, reply, it, it depends. No, what 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 are what what are the processes that we are interested? Uh, maybe we are not a player that that uh, work it traditionally with tenders. No, especially for the for the internal processes. No, the, the, we we we, we don't don't know not know so much about the machines for for leather uh, treating. We let me say uh, we start from after the product is ready for distribution. No, so we, 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 we love we work already and would love to work even deeper with ten tenneries, but probably on the level well when digitalization uh, is, is already uh, possible. No, once we can apply uh, a sensor or really digitalize the surface, not the part that is chemical treatment or you know all the other internal processes. No, no, that's that's a different difference. So interesting since, since you are talking about uh, uh, here's a question uh, also related to tenneries. So since you're B2P platform is, uh, is a trading platform for the digital twins of leather who can participate. The tanneries directly or food brands buying from the tanneries? Uh, well, uh, yet, no, this, this model is not yet, today is not yet available. No, we're working on it. Very soon we'll bring it to, to, the, to the market. But our goal is to make uh, also the material, uh, material part uh, uh, the same, with the, with the same philosophy like the main platform is. So I call point .com today is a B2B digital ecosystem. Ecosystem means 
every every player uh, may may take part uh, of it. Uh, so from from vendors, brands, manufacturers, buyers, uh, distributors, agents, uh, um, uh, suppliers of product of of raw materials of 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 elaborated materials. So basically anybody who is who is from the industry and how it will work on the. Mm, on the on the leather direction, uh, I think uh, uh, we start from yes, for, we start right from tenderies and footwear and 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 uh, rob, uh, footwear and uh, leather good uh, companies are already uh, using the platform, and so probably it will be like you know like 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 an, an exchange uh, uh, for um, for for presenting in, in presenting the products. But uh, I hope it was clear now from. Uh, from 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 my introduction into digitalization, every piece of leather is digitalized. So it's not only sample. It's not only you see a company, you see how their leathers in general look like. No, no, no. You can buy an exact piece of leather. You can buy 100, 100,000, whatever, but with the characteristics that we probably, you can specify. And we will find you uh, um, material with that specific characteristics. So information surely should come from or from, uh, as I show, as I showed at the end, from a, a, a service center with, which would partner with the tenderies or right from the tenderie if one wants to to enter into the game and and play directly to this game. Mm. So um, uh, here's a question about the speed. So how quickly is the digitalization from digitalized the material to digitalize the sample to physical uh, well digitalization uh, just passing you know the the, the scanner uh, on top of leather is is the matter of few seconds so it's 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 it's, it's very quick then uh, how how quick is the elaboration pre pre preparation of materials? It depends basically on the on the uh, technology connected not to the scanner. There could be a local computer, so a server. If it's a quite powerful server, again, it's very quick. Otherwise, if it's, it's a weak machine, it, it will take some time. But in our model, uh, the, 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 the oper operatively, the technology will be available from the cloud if it's available in the cloud, in a totally respect of privacy, uh, in autonomous way, et cetera, et cetera, cloud elaboration, it's almost real time. So we pass in a few seconds the scanner on top of, of, the, of the piece of leather and then elaborate in real time and just in a few seconds, it's available for any, any operations. Because think that for us, this scanner, this machine and its, its related software is part of footwear production chain. No, it's not only for digitalization somewhere else. We use it at factories and so, uh, when once you you you, you place you know, a piece of leather, you scan it, and then a small uh, mobile robot uh, takes it and brings it to the next operation for marking uh, or anything else. It is already ready. The robots, the next robot, which is ready in three seconds after uh, the scanning, which is ready to elaborate this leather, it, it already needs the digital map no, of the leather. So all the defects, all the quality zones, etc., they are basically elaborated in real time. Again, if the cloud option is available, it's very easy, very quick. Otherwise, you would need some, some, some local software, but still we talk about seconds. It's not hours. So uh, questions, uh, how do you control the quality of the scanning? If you understand the questions. Well, the, by, uh, by the philosophy of artificial intelligence is that it's AI that controls the quality of us. Now, of course, you need, first you need to teach it. And teaching any AI, any neural networks or specific algorithms is a process when uh, initially some experts, so we've got, we, we involve with a lot of experts, human experts, which made you know, the marking of the defects and, 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 and color zones and so on. AI learns from these experts. And of course, during the initial process, uh, in general for us, but then with every every other new company, we can uh, use their, ma their, their, their people, human experts, uh, and to compare. Now, the system will learn basically from a human expert. There is a neural network which already learned thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of pieces, and, and uh, we, we believe that the accuracy, the verified accuracy, any company can verify it. Now, you can, you can make it manually. You can, uh, you can see the results of automatic uh, uh, scanning and elaboration, and you can verify the results. Uh, in some cases, in some cases of, of 
uh, strange colors or really a strange type of leather. Uh, maybe it may require some additional training just on site. So a company will provide an expert who made some, some dozen of, of uh, uh, manual elaborations. We scan those no market, manually market leathers and the, and the, the, the AI system is, the, is then ready. How do we monitor it? You know, you can assign a person who sees the digital screen and, and, and following in a totally automated factory, it's not needed, but in a mixed factory uh, and in a, in a um, hybrid factory, there is a there could be a worker in front of a screen and you see how the system you know, pro, pro, propose uh, the layout and even nesting. And in the case you want to, to, make, to fix anything, you can just interrupt the automatic process and, and, and make it manually and the system will uh, incorporate the, the results of your manual fixes and not only incorporate it for this time, but also to learn it for the next time, uh, try to generalize and understand why there, uh, there is a different um, uh, way of, uh, uh, of marking you know, by this expert in, in respect of the initial program uh, known by the AI. So yes, thank we can you, adapt uh, it. Yes, yeah. Andrew, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, we are a bit running out of time. So uh, thank you again for your uh, innovative, uh, so dynamic uh, presentation. So I'm sure if you uh, buyers have any questions, you can always uh, send an email to Andrew or you can um, uh, let us know and we will pass your questions to Andrew. So thank you again, Andrew. Thank you very much. Everybody. Yeah. So uh, if you want to watch the webinar again, or share it to your colleagues, uh, you can find a replay in the next two days on our YouTube channel. And uh, for uh, uh, every one of you, and I would like to use this opportunity to remind you that our next APR in Hong Kong will be on 5th to 7th of July. So if you would like to get more information, please uh, visit our website, APF.com, or follow our social media to stay connected with us. So thank you again for your support. And uh, before you leave, uh, please help us to fill in a survey so that we can uh, organize more webinars like this for you in the future. In the meantime, stay safe and uh, I will see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.